Hello and welcome. This is second intermediate level, upstream two, unit six. Uh, today we are going to review lesson 60 and the title of this unit is All in All. And by the way, we are going to come back to this title right at the end of this lesson. So pay me your attention, please. Now let's move on. So before we start, let's review our objectives. Actually, we have three objectives, and these three objectives are connected to each other. So let's have a look at the first one. So the first objective is to identify problems and suggestions. And I want you to focus on these two words, problems and suggestions. And the second objective is to make suggestions, justifications to problems. Again, the main three words here are suggestions, justifications, and problems, of course, the one that we have seen in the first objective. And the third objective of today's lesson is to write an article making suggestions. By the way, this is our main objective today. And as I said, these three objectives are related to each other and we will move gradually to achieve the third one here. So let's move on. We will start our lesson by a very simple task. Actually, this task consists of pictures, three pictures, and I want you to look carefully at these pictures, and then you need to match them with the suggestions. Again, what is the meaning of problem? Everyone has a problem. If I'm tired, this is a problem. If I'm hungry, this is a problem. Okay, so these are the suggested suggestions. Of course, they are not in the correct order. So let's read the problems first. So the first one here, I'm always late for school. This guy, this guy problem is being late for school. So the second one is, I love eating and I am overweight. So what is his problem? His problem is being overweight. So overweight is another word or a synonym of fat, but you can say overweight because it's much polite than the word fat, because maybe other people might feel offensive, so it's better to use this nice word, which is overweight. While the third problem is, I moved, I'm gonna read it with you, I moved to a new school and I don't have any friends. So what is his problem here? Actually, he feels lonely and sad. So your job now, I'm gonna give you two minutes, and you need to match each problem with the suitable suggestion.
All right, now let's match each problem with the correct suggestion. I hope that you got it correct, so let's check. So the first problem, I'm always late for school, goes with don't stay late. What about the second problem? Or the third one here, I moved to a new school and I don't have any friends. So it goes with join your school clubs and groups. Of course, you will find other people who enjoy doing the same thing, the same fun things, and you will make friends as quickly as possible. What about the third one? Do you remember the solution or the suggestion, sorry, the suggestion for the problem? Here you go. Exercise two hours a day. It's a very useful activity. It's a very useful suggestion. And you will come over this problem in no time. Now, now let's review the first objective. So, to identify problems and suggestion. And I just want you to pay attention to the word problems and suggestions. What is the relationship between a problem and a suggestion? Well, a suggestion means a solution that we need to solve the problem. All right, now let's move on. All right, now I'm going to show you a problem and a suggestion. I, and I just want you to think, what is the problem with the following suggestion? So this is the problem. I have a terrible toothache. So here's the problem, a terrible toothache, okay? And here is the suggestion, see the dentist. So what do you think, what is the problem? Actually, grammatically speaking, it's fine, it's correct. But the meaning is not correct because this is imperative. In English, we use imperative like see, like do, like go, to give orders, not suggestion. Okay, so how can you make the suggestion much more polite? Let's go to the next page, and I have got the answer for this question. Well, there are certain expressions that we can use before making any suggestion. Like what? So the same problem that we have here? I have a terrible toothache, and the expression that we use is, you should, you should see the dentist regularly. So, do you think it's better than the previous one? It's better than saying, see the dentist? Of course, it's better than see, saying, see the dentist, because you have this expression, and now it sounds much more polite than the previous one. So, can you think of other expressions that we could use to make suggestions? Yeah, so here we go. We can say, you should, you can say, you could, or, why don't you, and by the way, if you use why don't you, you need to write a question mark at the end of the sentence, and you can say also, it would be a great idea too. So before we move on, remember to use these expressions before you give or make any suggestion. Now, let's move on. So now, let's talk about something else. There are also expressions that we can use to give justifications and reasons for the suggestions. Okay, so again, let's review the same problem. So look at the picture here. This guy has a terrible toothache. I have a terrible toothache. And what was the suggestion before? It was, you should see the dentist. Again, this is the expressions we used for the suggestion. And where is the expression that we use to give the justification and the reasons. Well, it's the one in the blue here. As you can see, if you do this, your teeth will be clean and healthy. So why do we use justification and reasons? Well, the answer is very clear because you want your idea to be much clearer and you want to persuade the other, the other person, the one you are giving or making suggestion to. Now, there are other expressions, of course. If you don't like the word or the expression, if you do this, you can say this, that way, your teeth will be clean and healthy. You can also say, this would mean that your teeth will be clean and healthy. You can say then, 
you can use you, by the way, then your teeth will be clean and healthy. And the last one, if you do this, your teeth will be clean and healthy. Now, and the last one here, by doing this, your teeth will be clean and healthy. All of these are suitable expressions. You can use them instead of if you do this and your sentence will uh, sound clear and simple. Now, let's review more problems and try to make some suggestions and justification and reason for each uh, suggestion. So, here we go. So, this is the problem. I don't do well in my English exams. So, what do you think? So, this is the suggestion. Read English short stories. So, we have a problem and we have a suggestion. What will happen if you read English short stories? So, this is the justification. Well, you will learn many new words. So, how can you merge the suggestion with the justification in one sentence? Well, now let's do an activity. I'm going to give you the same problem, and I want you to recall the same suggestion and the same justification, and I want you to merge them in one sentence. So this is the problem. Remember, this is the problem that we have, and you have one minute to merge them in one sentence. Remember to write the suggestion and the justification. Now, let's review your answer. So here's the sentence. You should read English short stories. If you do this, you will learn many new words. As you can see, we used the expression for making suggestions, and we also used an expression to give the justification. All right. So, Let's have another problem. So, here we have another problem. I am addicted to video games. So, what is the suggestion? And what is the meaning of addicted, by the way? Addicted is to use something extensively. Okay? For example, you play video games for, ver for very long hours maybe two hours, three hours, five hours. So this is a kind of addiction. You cannot get rid of playing games all the time. So what can you do? So here we have a suggestion. Well, you can take up a new hobby, such as swimming, if you like swimming. If you like other hobbies, you can write them down. You can say, I take up a new hobby, such as drawing or horse riding and other uh, hobbies. Now, justification. Why do you take up a new hobby? Because if you do this, you will spend less time playing video games. Now, the same activity, I want you to look at the suggestion and the justification and try to merge them in one complete sentence. Remember to use the expressions that we have discussed before. Again, you have one minute to merge the two sentences.
All right, let's have a look. So here's the sentence. Why don't you take up a new hobby such as swimming? And remember, we have a question mark here because we started with why don't you? And the justification is that way you will spend less time playing video games. So as you can see, we use the two expressions, one for the just suggestion and one for the justification. And your sentence now sounds more appealing. All right. Now, it's your turn to make some suggestions. I'm gonna show you a new problem and I'm gonna provide you with two visual aids. Have a look at them and try to think of the problem. What do you think, what is the problem with this man here? His problem is being overweight. So your friend is overweight. So this is the problem. Again, you remember the meaning of overweight? It's another word for fat. What is the suggestion? Eat plenty of fresh food like fruits and vegetables. Why is that important? Because you will feel much healthier. Now I want you to merge these two sentences or the suggestion and the justification in one complete sentence. And you have one minute to do this. Now, let's have a look at the complete sentence. Here you go. You should eat plenty of fresh food like fruits and vegetables. This way, you will feel much healthier. All right. So, now let's review the second objective of our lesson. So, if you remember, the second one was to make suggestions and justifications to problems. So, now we can we are able to make suggestions and we are able to give justification for these suggestions. Now, it's time for task number three. In task number three, you are going to see three different paragraphs, but they have a problem. They are not in the correct order. Your job is to put them in the correct order. Now, let's review the three paragraphs. This is the third one. Th sorry, this is the first paragraph. And this is the second paragraph. And the third paragraph. You have two minutes. I want you to read the three paragraphs carefully and try to put them in the correct order. So which paragraph is the first one, the second one, and the third one?
Now, let's have a look at the correct answer. So, this is the first paragraph, and the th second paragraph, and here's the third paragraph. I hope that you got the correct answer. All right. We will come back to this piece of writing, but I just want you to have the general idea of the layout and the style of this writing. As you can see, this type of writing is called an article. And if you remember our objective, this is the third objective. All right, so how many paragraphs are there? There are three paragraphs. And do you think there is a difference between this kind of writing and writing a letter? Well, it, it, may, it may seem different a little bit, but we will explain the, the, the details about this article uh, in a couple of minutes. So let's discuss the differences between a letter and an article. So what are the main differences between a letter and an article? So I think you are familiar with writing letters because they are very common and we use them all the time. So in a letter, one person usually reads it, okay? While in the article, many people read it. The other difference is that a letter starts with a salutation. For example, you start your letter saying, dear, hi, hello. So this is, this is the salutation, okay? And while in the article, you start with an introduction. So you don't have to salute your friend or greet them. No, you just start the topic. While the third, par the third difference is that letters are usually short, while articles are usually longer than letters. The fourth difference is that you ask the reader to write back. So if you want to finish your letter, you ask your friend to write back. While in the article, you summarize the main points. You don't have to ask the readers to write back. You just summarize the main ideas that you have talked about. And the last thing, it finishes with the writer's name. So you write down your name at the end of the letter, while in the article it finishes with a conclusion. And by the way, conclusion and summarizing are, are related because in the conclusion you summarize the main ideas, the main suggestions, the main justifications that you make. All right, now let's have a look at a model of a letter. So here we go. Do you think this is, a, this is an article or a letter? Well, it's very obvious, it's a letter. And why is that? Because we have salutation, so here's the salutation. And the opening remarks, of course. So you start your letter saying that you feel sorry and you are worried about your friend or, or other things, okay? Another thing is that the main body of the letter, this is the main body, okay? And this is the last paragraph. So you ask your reader to write back soon. So where is the expression that says you want your friend to write back? So write back soon. So you ask your friend to write back soon for you. And of course, you add your name. So where's the name? Here's the, here we go, saying is the name. All right. So this is the layout of a letter. It's totally different from the article. Uh, it starts with a salutation and it ends with a name, while in the article it's another thing. So now let's have a look at a model of an article. So as you can see here, it consists of three paragraphs. So what do you think the first paragraph is? In the first paragraph, this is the introduction. Why are you writing this article? I'm writing this article to give you some suggestions about how to stay, sorry, about how to be good at English. So this is the main idea here. So this is the introduction. Now, what about the second paragraph? The second paragraph, you just write down your suggestions and justifications. Well, you can have two suggestions and two justifications. If you want to write more, you can have three. 
it's up to you and how many ideas you have. So where is the first suggestion? So your friend problem, what is the problem here again? Your friend is not that good at English and you are writing this letter to give him some, some uh, suggestions. So the first one is watch English movies. And what is the expression that we use to give this uh, suggestion? You should. The other suggestion is, why don't you buy a good dictionary? So here's another suggestion. And the third one, it would be a good idea to read English stories. And if you pay attention to this paragraph, there is a justification after each suggestion. So it's very important to provide a justification, a reason for each suggestion. And what about the, th the third paragraph here? All in all, what you really need to do is to keep practicing. If you do this, your English, will, your English level will be better and you won't worry about English exams anymore. So in this paragraph, we summarize, summarize the main points that we mentioned in the second paragraph. I just wanted to remember that the main body is the most important part of this kind of writing because it has all the suggestions, it has all the justifications. And again, as I said, so if you start reading the second paragraph, to start with, you should watch English movies. So this is a suggestion. I know you love watching movies. So this is, you can elaborate on the idea. You can add more details to this suggestion. But here's the justification. That way, your, your speaking will get better quickly. So again, we have a suggestion and a justification. The same thing with the second sentence. Why don't you buy a dictionary? Again, this is the suggestion, and you can elaborate on this idea. You can, you can find many dictionaries for beginners and at, a very, at very low prices. And where is this justification? Here's the justification. By doing this, you will look up any difficult words. You can find out any difficult words. You can search for any difficult words. Okay, and the third one, of course, it would be a good idea to read English short stories. So again, here's another suggestion. And where's the justification? It is here. If you do this, you will learn plenty of new words every day. So as I said, this is the main body and it's the main part of writing an article. And remember to write an introduction it has to be uh, powerful and you need to mention the problem that you are going to focus on. And in the conclusion, as we said, you summarize the main points that you have mentioned in the, ma in the main body. All right, let's move on. Now, this is the article layout. And as you can see, we have uh, the summary of your suggestions. Present the topic, first suggestion and reason example, second suggestion and reason examples or example. I just want you to match each title to the correct paragraph or with the correct paragraph. So I'm going to give you one minute to do this and we'll come back. So let's have a look at the answer. 
So in paragraph one, we present the topic. So this is the introduction or the problem that you are going to discuss. So in the second paragraph, we write about our first suggestion and reason examples. And of course, the same paragraph, we can write about the second suggestion and reason and examples. And of course, you can have more than two suggestions if you have more ideas. And in the final paragraph, we summarize our suggestions again. But again, you need to use different words. You can rephrase your language. You can use synonyms in order to summarize the suggestions. Now, the final task. Now it's your turn to write a new article about one of the following problems. Well, we have two problems. The first one is many students at your school are overweight. What can you do? What are the suggestions for them? Or many teenagers are now addicted, addicted to video games. So you can choose one of these problems and write down your article. But make sure that you make suggestions and justification for each problem. And this will help you after you finish writing. You can go and check yourself. You can make or undertake a self-assessment in order to make sure that you have covered all the important points that we have to include in an article. So the first one is you make sure that you wrote an introduction. The second one, I made two or three suggestions. The third one is that you use suggestion expressions. Remember to use the expressions. This is very important. And number four, I wrote justifications for the suggestions. Again, after you write the suggestion, you follow it up with a justification or reason. Five, you use justification expressions. Again, don't forget to use the expressions that we have discussed before. And number six, remember to use capital letters. So it's all about capitalizations and punctuation skills. So this is very important. I put full stop at the end of each sentence and the last one, you write a conclusion. And again, in the conclusion, you summarize the whole thing, the main points that you mentioned in the main body or the second paragraph of the article. All right, so remember, you can also refer to the model in this lesson or your student's book on page 60. There is another article there. You can have a look at it and use some of the ideas there. That's all for today. I hope that you enjoyed our lesson today and it was beneficial for you and see you very soon. Goodbye.